bone joint in here also. Okay, so she, she's here also. Hi, Lorraine. Hi. <laughs> From, Hi, everybody. Uh, she's in she's in Houston. She's in Houston, born in Saudi Arabia. So it's a so here we go. Um, can you can you see my screen now? No. Yes. Are you all view, are, are you viewing my screen? Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, well, thank you all for for joining. Uh, like somebody said, yesterday's uh, presentation was was very engaging. It was very nice. Appreciated everybody's comments. Uh, it was uh, very enjoyable presenting. Uh, this this view is is our personal view from our balcony uh, uh, outside of Port Heli. So it's really quite uh, quite a pleasure to be out there. Um, what I'm going to talk about today uh, is, of course, Greece 2023. And what I've provided is both the English and the Greek spelling, in case you're looking at a map, and it only indicates uh, the, the Greek. You'll, you'll see that with, with every, uh, every town that I've, I'm talking about. The focus of, of my presentation is on the, the mainland. mainland. Uh, you can find plenty of stuff uh, on the islands, always YouTube or whatever, uh, and not so much uh, information discussed about the mainland. And I, I love it. I love driving around different parts of Greece. My wife and I crisscross uh, continuously finding new, new places. Um, and it, I, I, I find uh, the people are, are very enjoying, enjoyable. The food is excellent. The further away you get from the real touristy hotspots, I think the better the food is. I'm gonna talk about the highlights, uh, some newsworthy highlights, cover a couple of maps. And then the, when I started doing this, I wanted to talk about so much of Greece, but it got to be too long. So this time I'm only um, focusing on the Attica area and the Peloponnese. I can next time talk about Macedonia and Thraki and then and Central Greece, uh, I'm willing to do that. But I just cannot cover everywhere. Uh, there's too much to cover, like I said. And I know particularly that I have, we have some Greek guests here. I'm gonna miss a lot of probably their favorite places, uh, but you know, bear with me. I, could, I Because of the time constraint, I just picked some places that I had personally been through and, and had some pictures and, you know, there's just, it's a beautiful country, but I just can't cover it all. Uh, not in one presentation. So these are links uh, to articles that I found. I'll talk about a couple of them. And it, in the saved presentation, you'll be able to copy and paste the links if you're interested in those. I will talk about... Uh, how Greece is listed among the best places to retire. Uh, it's one of the, the 10 uh, cheapest places to live in Europe. I'm not gonna talk about it, but here's some interesting stuff. I mean, the top 10 ski resorts in Greece. You don't think of Greece as being a ski haven, but they've got some great mountains and they get a lot of good snow. There's an article on the Michelin Guide on some restaurants, I don't talk about that, but there's you can click on that. And then really uh, what the beaches are like here in the winter time, not that you necessarily uh, plan on going swimming, but they're not gonna be that crowded and they're, they're just as beautiful uh, in, in the winter time as they are in, in the summer. So it's uh, really, it's, it's a very interesting article. So why is Greece a great place to retire? Uh, it's beautiful, of course, and good, good value for your money. And it's got some of the best food in the world and a lot of history you know, to keep you busy. Of course, if you're moving here, uh, you'll be like us and you'll do your fair share of island hopping, which is exactly what we're doing uh, now. Uh, and so that, that's a lot of activity. And you can live uh, on about 
$1,900 a month. Now I challenged that yesterday before the presentation just to see if that's a legit uh, comment. And I picked central Athens as a, as a location. And I found around the Hilton, the US embassy uh, apartments uh, start like a one bedroom apartment, uh, start at around uh, 900 euros a month. And central Athens, Sydney, uh, around the Grand Bataan area, Constitution Square, whatever you want to call it, they started around a thousand. So this is not, if you, of course, the further you get away from the center, central part of, of Athens or in the suburbs or whatever, uh, the more reasonable uh, rents become. So this is not a bad number. The most expensive European cities, Greece is ranked number 22. So a long way from the most expensive with a decent uh, GDP rate of eight and a half percent. That's that's very encouraging. I've compared it to some of the other countries that Greece competes with for tourism. Uh, and you can see uh, where Portugal, Spain and Italy are ranked. A lot of a lot of uh, value for your money here. Now, the most welcoming regions on Earth, Ipirus, Greece, is ranked number two, and that's uh, on the uh, the western part of the country. Yanana is there; uh, it's kind of like the central place there. Very beautiful, and you could go. You can scroll down this list, and the only one I, I met. Sorry if I if bad thing about this, but North Dakota, I just can't imagine uh, that being, I can't explain why it's there, but it must be nice to make this list. It must be a nice place. Okay, here's a, just a general map of Greece, uh, of whole, the whole of Greece. Again, we're, we're, we're right in here right uh, today. Where I live, uh, most of my time is, is in this location. We have another home here. Iro and Dora are from Kavala. This is where I met Iro and we married. I was working over here on the, the uh, petrochemical fields, the oil and gas fields here when I met her. Thessaloniki is the second largest city in Greece. So we're going to talk about Attica here and the Peloponnese, this region. Again, just little bits and pieces, but I just want to give you a general idea. Yeah, and this is uh, Iporos, this, this region right here, second most welcoming, uh, welcoming um, region in, in the world. Another topic, another day, but uh, I just threw this in there for interest. This is, these are the wine regions of Greece and their Greek wines are truly delicious, very nice wines. So this, this, is, uh, this is a nice presentation again uh, for another, another day. So how do you get around when you land in Athens? Uh, what, what do you do? Well, car rentals are a pretty, pretty easy bet. And this is from uh, booking.com ratings that uh, Spain is ranked number one and Greece is ranked number two for car rental companies. Airport taxis, it's the same thing. Spain is ranked number one, followed by Greece. So whatever you choose uh, to get by car, uh, feel, you should feel fairly comfortable. Other ways to get around, this is the Athens Metro and tram lines. You can take the metro from the airport all the way through central the center of town out to Perez. If you're leaving the, uh, the Athens area by immediately catching a ferry, you can get there this way. Here's the other. The, this is called Elenico. Elenico is where the old, old airport used to be. And this is close to uh, where we live in Glifada. But uh, you can see, I mean, the, the, this is the, the current ones. They're expanding the lines continuously and, and this way and this way. 
Uh, the, the tram service is very good also. And again, these are these are really inexpensive ways of getting around. Uh, this is the, the, the tram and where we live in, in, in our apartment in Glifada is right here. So we can just pop right into either, either way here. Good service. Or they have a 24 seven bus service from the airport. There's uh, four bus routes. This one go takes you the X, and they're, 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 these are the X lines. And as you come out of the airport and you go down to the right is the, uh, the bus station, the bus terminal there where you buy your tickets. And this takes you right down to, into the center of uh, Athens. This takes, the X95 goes right down to Sindingba. This is the one that I've taken many times. Uh, it, it goes to Perez, but I hop off in Glifada, and this X97 takes you to the uh, the Elenico uh, uh, metro line. When to travel to Greece? Well, they are now expanding the, the uh, they're heavily promoting tourism in Greece year round, not just the, the central, the center part of the year. This is the most heavily uh, traveled time, but like I said, there's the ski areas are attracting uh, skiers uh, in in the winter, and people that like to go uh, uh, on off seasons will find it very comfortable uh, weather-wise uh, as well. Okay, now to Attica. This is Athens. Again, we we live uh, Glifada is here. Vula 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 Gmeni. Eros uh, Club. Here's uh, there. There are two ferry ports uh, near Athens: Rafina to the east coast and Paras here on the not, not the west, but the west side of Athens. So you can see. And here's the airport. So airport is is pretty central. Uh, so this this is Attica. Here's Ayana, I'm gonna talk a little bit about here, and Sunio, the Cape of Sunio is here at the key. So Elefsina, Athens, Sunio, and Ayana are the, the four topics I've picked, or the four towns uh, th for this topic. And we always talk about food when we come to Greece. So this is my daughter, Christina, our, our, our eldest. We were having dinner. Delicious, this is, a, this is a problem. I mean, the bread here is so delicious. You just can't stop eating it. We have a beautiful cabbage salad, zucchini sticks, fresh cod, bacoyato, and it was fabulous. This is in a restaurant that's just down beneath our apartment. So, Elefsina. Elisina, of course, has a long, long history, but it was it's picked to be the 2023 cultural capital of Europe this year. It is really it's an industrial area currently, and but they're trying to give it a, a, a new life again. And it it uh, was very famous uh, historically. Uh, they had ceremonies there. That uh, uh, that sought to find the, the mystery, to explain the mysteries of death, and this was a festival that you prepared yourself for, and it took nearly a year uh, to prepare. So they're trying to bring back the, the old historical side of uh, Elisina, and this is just as you're as you're leaving Athens, coming uh, uh, out through Paraes and out towards the West. They have uh, events going on all year, all this year. Athens, Athena. These are, unfortunately, these are, these are uh, stock photos. I, I don't have my camera with me, uh, which I have tons and tons of um, pictures. But this is a picture I took. We went to Erodion for a concert there. It was packed. Beautiful, beautiful theater. Uh, Yanni's, the, the one album 
Yannis at the Acropolis was is he played? Yeah, yeah, he was he played here also. There's continually concerts. And then afterwards we were walking down uh, the back way and, and we stopped so I could take a picture of my wife Hero in, with the, the night lights. So what do you do when you come to Athens? There's everything to do there, but some of the uh, the, the, the key points. Sorry? Uh, the, the Parthenon on the Acropolis, of course, of course, it all the end, like I, I, I mentioned, uh, is on, on the side of the Acropolis. Plaka is a great fun place to, uh, to walk around, do some uh, touristic type shopping and yeah, lots of food. Uh, the Acropolis Museum is a great place to go spend some time. Uh, I'd recommend everybody going there. I go there and it's, it's a three hour trip for me. The Benaki Museums, I believe there's seven different Benaki Museums that cater to different interests. Uh, the archeological, of course, some other museums. And then the Stavros Niarcos Foundation. I'm a member of this uh, cultural center because I'm a senior and I got senior discounts. Uh, so I, I pass all the information around to the family. And then there are a lot of, if you're coming here and you wanna, if you're in Athens and you wanna uh, attend uh, Rotary meetings, there are, uh, I've listed 10 here and there are uh, 107 clubs in this district. So the, the, the yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have witnesses here. Um, so yeah, this is it. they're they're very they're very active Rotarians here. And here we were. Oh, there's Nora behind us. So here we were uh, last weekend at the. Uh, the district conference. Another one of my really, really favorite places uh, to go is on the Cape of Sunio. It's the southern tip of Attica. And I believe it's one of the first temples erected. And it was erected through uh, Poseidon. It is, uh, it's, it's a lovely drive, but it's spectacular at sunset. I have better pictures of it, of sunset uh, than, than this, but again, they're on my, they're on my camera. Um, so I had to borrow, borrow some pictures, but definitely drive there during the day, stay for the sunset. And then there's a little uh, restaurant on the side. Uh, you have your cocktails, have a little dinner and, en and just enjoy the scenery. A, you know, I don't, I, I said I was gonna just talk about the mainland but I'm gonna talk about just two little islands uh, that are easy to get to. There's no brainers. Aegina is just off of Athens, off of Pharaos. And the ferries travel almost every hour back and forth. There, these are uh, a couple, uh, a few of the things to, to see when you get there. A particular interest is Arios Nectarios' uh, monastery. Uh, because he was the first uh, modern Greek uh, saint. And this floating uh, green grocery is really cool. You just walk along and you see all these boats uh, backed up selling their, their, their wares. And this is, uh, th this is what the harbor looks like. And it's an artist, it's kind of an artist haven. Uh, and, and you see artworks everywhere. And uh, here's Iroh enjoying. Um, we, we were visiting one of our friends that has a hotel there. It's right on the sea. And, and actually the pool is saltwater pool. Beautiful, beautiful place. And I talk about the pistachios. And if you love pistachios, you're gonna really love these. Uh, they are, they're famous for these, for their pistachios. They sell them worldwide. 
they're graded A and B. A grade A means it's naturally popped open. A B means that they've used a little of uh, outside, outside source of heat. But the flavor is very unique. Now, the, the trees all originated from Iran, but what makes them different is the dryness and the soil. The soil there is unique. So buy pistachios from A in it. Don't buy them from California when you're there. Now we're going to go to Peloponnese. Uh, again, Porta Heli. This is where we're from, where I live most of the time. Uh, you come, you come from Athens, Elefsina across the isthmus of Corinth. Oh yeah, and we were over here last week at um, uh, at the Rotary Conference. Yes, Lutraki. Okay, the first place and probably one of the most important places in the world is uh, Apidavros. Uh, you may pronounce it a little bit different. I've been pronouncing it the Greek way for so long. I can't remember how to say it in English. Epidavros, is that how you say it? <laughs> like, hey, Ero says that and she chuckles, so I don't know if it's right or not. She's pulling my leg. Um, this is the, the amphitheater. It's a must do place. This is this bottom part is the original uh, ancient uh, Greeks built. And the top section is where the, the Romans expanded it. They have the Athens and the Piedavros festival every year. And these are the theater groups that travel around uh, Greece, the islands, wherever they have amphitheaters. And from what they do is they, they accommodate you. Now to Pidovros, you can get uh, shuttle buses that will bring you there and then return you back to your hotels, which is nice because the theaters are at nighttime and you're driving through the mountains. And nobody wants to be driving through the mountains at 2.30 in the morning or whenever the, 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 the plays end. Uh, but uh, it's it, very convenient. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, no, well, it's, it's the it's the second when, bullet, and I did. See? When mom speaks, you can't hear her. So, uh, uh, if you want to repeat what she's saying, please. Yeah. No, I said that um, in a in a theater, just in the theater. It's, it's not a good connection. It is not a good connection. Yeah, well, it's it's the second bullet here. Can, can you hear me better, Lorraine? Yeah, your voice is clear. Your rose is not. My yeah. Well, what I met, what I mentioned earlier, we have a it's an unsecured network in the hotel, uh, and it's not a good connection. So I'm hot spotting through my phone, uh, and it it, it we, we I, I apologize. Yesterday, I even had some problems from Fort the Heli, but, and that was on my own line, but uh, we'll, we'll make it through. Thanks, Lorraine. So this is a museum there at uh, Pidavros. Uh, you know, Greek, Greece has forest fires, like July, August, when it's um, uh, very dry, and there was severe fires were encroaching on this museum and the forest uh, firefighters were all out. I mean, they were throwing all the resources around protecting this oh, uh, very, very museum. Now, uh, I have not been to, well, this is the only place that I haven't been to, but it, it, because it, it was, I, I saw this article uh, Methana is a volcanic area, so it has a lot of uh, hot, natural hot springs, and they're expand they're expanding the, the hiking and running routes in this area. It's on it's it's very close to the island of Poros, 
as you're coming down the East Coast, uh, and I, I intend to get there uh, soon, you can walk up to the to the lip of this this one volcanic uh, volcano, and I, I definitely intend to do that. But there's 32 volcanoes on this little place. And this is what one of the spas uh, looks like. I, I, I tried booking in here and it didn't seem to be open, but maybe it's just seasonal. One of us, yeah. Uh, we went here one time uh, for Easter, Pascha. Um, Lorraine with Steve Betts, if you remember, I don't know if you remember that one, but uh, Monavisia, it's the, Europe's oldest continuously inhabited castle towns uh, in Europe. It's, 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 it's here, it's this, this one. A little bit of quick history, I'm not gonna read all this, but in 375, there was a massive earthquake that broke this, uh, pathway here to the, it, so it, it all sunk. So they rebuilt it and they were able to use it uh, to keep out invaders. And it developed as a, uh, as a seafaring community. A lot of history in all these places, but uh, you, can, you can certainly read this uh, later. Mona Vesia, only entrance. And I found this again, here's, here's the links to the information. Again, the best pictures are mine and they're uh, on my camera, unfortunately, and I didn't, I didn't pack it on this last trip. But uh, it, is, it is really beautiful. You cross this walkway, this pathway, and there's a lot of little ca uh, coffee shops, cafe meals, little uh, quaint um, restaurants and uh, shops. Beautiful, beautiful uh, setting. And I've climbed up on top of the uh, the castle here and walked around. Next stop is Mani. Uh, this, this region, we went there a couple of months ago when we were in Greece, uh, we went to Sparti for baptism and our, our friend from Sparti said, you, you gotta go see this place. Again, the history, a little brief history in here, but uh, the, 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 the people from this region were very independent. Uh, they self-governed and although during the, uh, the Ottoman Empire, the uh, Ottoman occupation of Greece, they conceded and when they did that, they were supposed to pay taxes, pay their taxes, and they paid one time. And the Ottomans just decided it better to just leave them alone. They, they claim there that the, uh, Greek, the Greek War of Independence started there first uh, on March the 17th, 1821 versus March the 25th. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the rest of rest of Greece. Here's Iro and our friend Vula. You can look at the the very rich stone construction there. They they built their homes uh, very vertical with few windows, so to, they were easy to to protect. But you walk in these uh, squares, plateas, and it's all stone, and if you look really cute here is they take the, the olive oil cans, which are 16 liters, and they paint them really nicely. This is not just this one store. It was uh, all, all throughout this square area. Now we're getting into where, where we live. I'll talk about that. This is the second island I'll talk about. Spetses uh, in Porta Heli, including Predidi, Kilada, uh, with um, um, the, the very uh, uh, 
No, no, Amon Zoe, uh, the, the, the Seven Star Hotel. Hermione, uh, which includes Agus Emelianos, where Lorraine was married, and Petrothalassa, and then Nathleon. So, and this, this painting here is by Christine, our daughter. And these are the little water taxis lined up in Costa, which is just outside of Porto Heli, to take you uh, to the island of uh, Spetses. So here we are in Spetses, Lorraine with her family by carriage going around in a carriage. Uh, this is really common form of transportation. Uh, the, the, that or during the season, you can do, do the buses around. You can rent a little uh, scooter, hire a bicycle. No, yeah, no cars except there's some taxis allowed. A limited amount of taxis. I prefer to, to hoof it. I walk. I walk everywhere, but it, it, because it's just really gorgeous. Uh, this is the uh, Posidonian Hotel, very famous hotel, and related to. Uh, the Grand mm -hmm. Bataan in, in Athens. Great place to have cocktails up here because you sit out and you look across the sea. And this is an aerial view of uh, the, from the Old Harbor, which is really popular at nighttime. Great restaurants, uh, a lot of nice clubbing in here. And then this is the, the, the New Harbor. This is the, the, uh, Old Harbor, the New Harbor. What to do, uh, activities. The, I can't believe I missed this one. Not that I would compete, but it would have been great to go over to see the, tri the triathlon there. There's the, uh, the regatta in June, the armada, which is a reenactment of the, uh, the Spetsons attacking the Ottoman Empire uh, uh, ships as they were sailing by. And then there's a ma mini marathon coming up in October. The, the Armada is the second Saturday of September. The island of Spetses, uh, th this is the bus route. There's one goes this way and another bus goes this way. This area over here is great for water sports. This one is, Paralia is supposed to have the uh, most beautiful beaches. If you charter, if you have a little boat on your own, you can, this is supposed to be a very beautiful secluded beach. And then over here for the organized bars and activities. Now back to Port Heli. Another one of Christine's paintings is on the Bax Harbor behind the, the, the church. These um, little, Little fishing boat, Scafos, they're called. Uh, she's painted that. And I think this is the one where she captured. Is this the one that has you out in the water? There may be another one. <laughs> and then another activity over here um, is, is this uh, Yaya's family farm. This is an organic farm. It's a great place to bring the kids uh, where they'll, 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 Children come in, feed the uh, the ducks, the geese, the chickens. Horse riding, yeah, constantly did horse riding this last summer. And then you go in, and the kids can pick up the eggs, and they'll make breakfast from the eggs that you pick. Very, very fresh. This is one of the many beaches in Porto Heli uh, that we we enjoy. And then this is uh, after church service. We allow the, the, the kids to uh, use the cart to go pick up luggage to haul it around when the ferries come in and earn some, some coins. Oops. And then Agapi, our little granddaughter, selling organic olive oil uh, out of uh, our friend's oil. Uh, oil yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It rolls around. Me. I'm joking. This is a joke. <laughs> But it looks real, <laughs> very convincing. So back to the food. This is this is by far my favorite plate, grilled sardines. Uh, I just I can't get enough of these things. 
stuffed peppers and tomatoes. Uh, this is Yimmy Stott. This is the vegetarian version. Now, this was during Lent uh, and usually prepared, uh, ready, readily prepared, Yimmy Stott. Uh, and if anybody thinks that they don't serve good meat in Greece, they are wrong. This is a big tomahawk chop uh, slab of aged meat. Uh, it's so good. And then what do the kids do when they, uh, they've they earned their money from uh, from carrying luggage? They get the best ice cream. Just ask Constantine. It is absolutely fantastic ice, ice cream in Greece. This was my lunch for Greek Independence Day. Very typical uh, cod fillets served with the garlic dip. Bakayaro mezcodaya, tzatziki. Uh, everybody knows tzatziki now. It's very common. Uh, it's the yogurt, garlic dill dip, uh, zucchini uh, fritters. I think the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very delicious. Toasted bread, um, lentils. Also, another meat dish. This is beef. Uh, beef patties with uh, mushroom sauce, just gorgeous, gorgeous food. Linguini with shrimp, fantastic. And Iro preparing fresh mussels uh, that she picked up uh, from our a little stop on the way from Athens to the Porta Heli, sold on the seaside. So the family at Amanzoe is, a, this is our, my, my son and, and Iro, uh, just such a beautiful, beautiful location. And it's on the hills just behind where we live. We bring our guests up there for cocktails in the evening. Uh, here's what the bungalows look like, the view from the inside, just really luxurious. It is not cheap. Yeah, I think it's like, it, yeah, it runs about 2,300 euros or 2,500 euros a night, but uh, beautiful. One of the, one of my favorite uh, photo taking opportunity locations is Hermione. Uh, this particular place, this is where we go to eat very often. Uh, it's just the blues that you can capture there. If you're a photo bug, you, this is definitely a high, on, high on the list. Our area, actually, going back to Port Heli, uh, our area, it's famous. Uh, it, it's a very popular area. Uh, there's a German photographer that set up a site for doing his uh, Mercedes shoots there uh, for their advertisements because of the light, the light that's available there. And here is fresh octopus hanging up on the rack to dry. You go pick what you want and they'll cook it. Delicious, beautiful. Nathlio. Nathlio, it's, uh, it's about 45 minutes to there, uh, to, to there from Porta Heli. It was the first capital of the new Greek state after the revolution. Uh, and it was the capital uh, 1823 to 1834. They then voted on where the capital should be seated. And that's when it moved to uh, Athens. And Athens at that time, because of the, the tremendous losses of life uh, fighting the Ottomans, there was only 7,000 people at the time living in Athens. When the capital, but they they had a vision of what they were going to do to rebuild the country. But Nathlio uh, goes back to the Argonauts, and and uh, they they supported those expeditions. It's a very beautiful place. Here's the Borzi. Borzi is an Ottoman. Was an Ottoman, yeah, Ottoman prison. Uh, this is the fortress up on the hillside. Super. That's one place I have not hiked yet. 
pretty imposing. And, and then the, the, the coffee shop restaurants. This is really typical of what they look like, the streets look like in almost all the cities. Stone line, in the evenings it's usually pedestrians only, but this is a good capture right here. I love this, I love this picture. It's not mine, I wish it was. So what do you do around our area, Puerto Heli? There's something going on every month of the year. Uh, January, they celebrate the end of the olive harvesting. We actually harvest, we do early harvest. With, uh, it's like October. So that they continue throughout uh, the, the wintertime harvesting and then they celebrate the Fritter Festival. I, have, I haven't been there. I'm anxious to try all these out. The Carnavale in February in Porto Heli. This is something that interests me. Uh, Didima, Didima is before you get to Cranidi, Porto Heli, this area off to the side, Forni, uh, is the last little village before you hit Cranidi. Uh, uh, Clizonas is this, yeah, we've got to find, th this is something that I've, I've just discovered. I believe it has to do with um, un unmarried girls that try to find the boys and they, they jump over the fire um, kind of thing. And then in, there's this uh, international festival in uh, Porta Heli. It's free to the public. Uh, these are uh, usually musicians and uh, very, very good uh, musicians performing there. I've been a couple of times to the Fisherman's Festival. The Potato Fest Festival is back now after COVID. And uh, we'll see about this Great Harvest Festival and, and the Olive Festival, I haven't, I haven't been to that either. A lot of stuff though, in our area. Now, now turn to just a little personal note. This is one of our uh, residences. This is our uh, the first place that we bought in uh, Porta Heli. It's our townhouse uh, that we 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 rent it out now, but it's it's rented uh, through through the summer to Aman Zoe actually. But it's a lovely, lovely location. Uh, and I say our color. Again, we we try to we try to reflect the outdoor theme. Yeah. Rotary guy. Sorry. Yeah. Try to reflect the outdoor theme inside, and it's just it's just gorgeous. This is this this picture here is taken from our balcony. This is our current property that we where we live. This is a, a, a screenshot that I got, a, a capture off of uh, booking.com. Uh, but that's, we're listed there in Airbnb for the downstairs place. And th this is the current view of it. Iron Hill Villa since 1981. Okay, Iron is Iro and Ron. We live on a hill now, and we lived in Dauron Hills when we were with the Ramco. And Villa, of course, is Villa. And since 1981 is when we were married in Kavala. So we've, we've combined all our history into one location now. So here we are. Um, our contact information, if you're interested. And uh, sunset, sunset in Porta Heli. Just a beautiful uh, location. And I am Iro, I'm the Greek, but this guy, I tell you, he's assimilated immensely well <laughs> with the Greek culture. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop sharing now.